Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So, I have a confession to make. My confession is, I love cutlasses. Um, I don't know why I haven't spoken more about cutlasses in the past. I actually own several different types of cutlasses, but I really, really love cutlasses. Why do I love cutlasses? Well, first of all, when people ask me about my perfect kind of home defence or a zombie apocalypse type weapon, I always think of a cutlass. Why? Because they've got a sturdy cut and thrust blade. Um, they're really good at cutting, really good at thrusting. Uh, with a shorter blade, it's more rigid. You get a lot of thrusting power. Uh, and that's something which is really important to state, actually. The longer you make a blade, generally speaking, the more flexible it comes. The more fle flexible it becomes, um, actually, the more difficult it can be to get penetration. And if you really like deep penetration, then a short blade can sometimes be better. Um, and why do I love cutlasses so much, apart from just the kind of um, physical characteristics of the blade? Um, part of it, I don't know, it could be the semen in me, um, I really can't say, but it, it, it's the look of them, the fact that they've got really good, chunky, big hand protection. Um, they actually have, certainly the British ones anyway, have cast iron grips. They're utterly, uh, they're hollow, so they're not solid, um, solid iron, it should be pointed out, so they're not as heavy as you might be imagining. Um, but this is a two and a half pound weapon. It is a heavy, meaty weapon, um, uh, and it weighs as much as a, as a cavalry sword in most cases. Um, so it's incredibly solid, and it's got a very assuring, reassuring um, feel to it in the hand. It feels uh, it feels meaty and solid and chunky, um, and I like the feeling of something meaty and chunky in my hand. Um, so they're just really, really lovely swords. They're handy, they're short, they're um, good as weapons, they're good functional weapons, they're very tough, they've got good hand protection. I love them, and as, as I say, uh, it, it could be the semen in me, but I like the, uh, I like the nautical connection as well. Um, and the fact that, you know, they were used on board ships in the age of sail, I think it's quite a romantic thing. One final thing I want to mention is that I've recently acquired one of these. Um, and this is, what is it called? It's a micrometer, I think it's called. It's essentially calipers that have a digital readout on them. And that is so cool. Um, so I was sitting in front of my computer not long ago thinking, um, you know, I've done quite a lot of videos where I talk about weapons like my cutlass here, and I talk about the thickness along the blade at certain points, or the thickness of the guard, and I'm always guessing and estimating, and I think it would be really good if I had something to actually measure this, and I've seen in uh, videos, uh, some of Scal's, uh, Scalagrim's videos, for example, I think he used a micrometer, and I thought, I wonder how expensive they are. I'd always assumed, you know, probably about £100, something like this, um, and I thought, well, you know, £100, I earn some money out of YouTube, I could justify it as a business expense, and it would be a useful thing to have. Yeah, it's quite expensive, but let's just go and have a look on Amazon and see if you can buy them on there and how much they cost. £10! £10! I had no idea that you could get a micrometer for £10. It's just one of those weird things. I had just always assumed, never never having a reason to look for the cost of a micrometer before, I had always assumed that they were expensive. Um, and so therefore I'd never thought to buy one because I thought, well I don't really need one, I can estimate the thickness. Hell, for £10, I, like you couldn't believe how quickly I clicked that buy button. Thank you Amazon. And Amazon Prime, it was with me super quickly the next day. Um, so, uh, yeah, thank you, Amazon Prime. I, I got this micrometer um, uh, the next day after ordering it, and it's really brilliant. And, um, you know, I'm not a scientist by, uh, <laughs> by job at least, um, but uh, I got really excited and I went around and I started measuring everything I could find to measure, um, and including a lot of swords. And it's really, really interesting actually, because for the most part, uh, most swords corresponded roughly to what I expected their thicknesses along the blade, for example, to be, uh, and their width and that kind of stuff. Obviously width you can measure fairly easily with a measure, uh, but thickness is not that easy to measure with a, with a ruler. Um, I mostly do it obviously in uh, millimetres, you'll be happy to hear. I do not use imperial measurements, I use um, metric, because metric obviously is much more precise, I believe, for measuring thicknesses. So just for, as a matter of scientific interest, let's measure my meaty cutlass here. Uh, just for the record, this is a... Um, 
kind of complicated to explain what this is. This is an 1845 pattern Royal Navy Cutlass. It is British. It has both Birmingham and Enfield um, proof marks on it. Uh, the reason for that is because the 1845 Cutlass was um, later, after 1845, so we're talking about the, in the end of the 1850s and then again in the 1880s, was um, changed and adapted slightly. They shortened the blade, in some cases they straightened the blade, um, and they changed the profile of the point. The point became a bit more pointy, as you see on this example. So I actually have a, a, an earlier example which has a 29 and a half inch blade. They shortened the blade down to sort of about 26, 27 inches on the later ones. So this is one of the later ones. So it's been, uh, it's an 1845 pattern cutlass that has later, at some point, probably in the 1880s, had its size and shape changed very slightly. Um, but so let's measure along this blade for a matter of interest. For those of you who have replica swords or are looking at maybe Albion swords, um, this might be interesting um, statistics to have. So let's just hold this around the right way so I can actually see. So the thickness of the blade at the base, da, 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 there we go. Oops, I let it move then. There we go, let's put it off there, is just under, it's 7.8 millimetres. So there we go. So the base of the blade here is 7.8 millimetres. Now it's worth mentioning that is quite a bit thicker than most replica swords. Certainly, unless you get up to sort of Albion quality, a lot of replica swords out there only have sort of four or five millimetre, more like five millimetre thick blades at the base. Antique swords and old swords, whether you go back right the way to medieval period swords, tend to be thicker at the base of the blade than a lot of modern replicas do. So right at the base of the blade, it is, oh, it's now reading eight. Okay, I've obviously gone to a slightly different, yeah, eight millimeters, okay? So eight millimeters at the base of the blade. But then if we just come a few centimeters down from the base of the blade, it actually reduces down quite quickly to, essentially six millimeters. Okay, so it goes from eight millimeters to six millimeters quite quickly. Then if we come down to about a third of the way down the blade, five and a half millimeters, essentially 5.4 in fact. Then if we come down to the middle of the blade, halfway down, 4.5 millimeters. Okay, so it's now 4.5 millimeters here. So actually the thickness of the blade in this portion here is as thick as a lot of replica swords or lower end replica swords are at the base of the blade. So we've gone eight millimeters, seven millimeters, five and a half millimeters, four and a half millimeters. Then if we come down to the center of percussion, so the bit that we'd normally be cutting with, 3.3 millimeters. Let's just measure again, because I think I was, ah, 3.6. So 3.6 millimeters. Now it's important to point out, I'm measuring at the back of the blade here because the blade is a wedge section. Obviously it goes towards the edge, so it gets thinner towards the edge. But the thickest portion at the center of percussion is 3.6 millimeters. Oh, it's getting heavy, this sword. I was um, sparring, uh, training last night, so my arm's a bit knackered. I did uh, a number of very good fights with some of my excellent students, including Pedro and Wenzi and Matthew. And uh, yeah, there we go. Three, still 3.6 millimeters, a bit closer to the point. Now let's measure just essentially just behind the point. It's now diamond section at this point. It is. 3.1 millimeters. So essentially it's sort of between the central percussion and the point it, it varies only by half a millimeter between three and a half, three and a half millimeters and three millimeters here. Um, so there we go, micrometer, awesome thing to have. So cutlasses, I love them. That's the first thing we've learned. The second thing we've learned is that micrometers are really cool, possibly boring to watch, and I apologize if it was, but I think it's really interesting. Cheers folks. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, follow us on Facebook. You can buy t shirts through Spreadshirt, support us on Patreon, or follow us on Pinterest. Thank you.